Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 30th, 2016. This is from Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. Thank you, Muzzle Mike, for sending this one in. Recently, they moved the doomsday clock from five minutes to three minutes to midnight. And some of the basic changes, um, the reasons behind the changes are because of global nuclear weapons modernizations and also climate. They, uh, if you actually read, it's not just, if you go to the website Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, it's not just about the doomsday clock, although that's how your average person pretty much knows about it. But they do have issues of uh, a magazine-style deal. And if you click on Current Issue, you can see their main talks are all about climate change and stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying that climate change isn't happening. Uh, you could argue about how much is mankind and how much is the Earth's orbit, the sun, various things like that, but one thing that could be a positive, and it's been said before, is if we skip a uh, an ice age, it could bode pretty well for humankind. I mean, I wouldn't like I wouldn't like to see us uh, have to go through, an, excuse me, another ice age. It's not a not a fun deal, and not good for human beings. But uh, I see more reasons, that, and people are saying, well, they're just doing it to try to uh, uh, get rid of uh, cars and stuff like that. I think there are a lot of other reasons that we need to upgrade technology and leave behind the uh, gasoline engines and stuff like that and go to electric cars. I mean, um, who wants to really breathe that crap anyway? I mean, nobody's going to, I don't think anybody at this point should be able to say logically that breathing exhaust fumes from cars is a good thing. So if they can uh, get the electric cars perfected, I mean, gasoline engines have seen their time and day. And I know my friends on motorcycles, especially, they like the roar of a gasoline engine, but you know, you have to move on. Technology does move on. And uh, this next one is from WALB News in Atlanta. This couple bought a house in the southern part of Atlanta, and all of a sudden people were showing up at their door believing that they had stolen their phone. I guess it started out as mostly an iPhone app, uh, Find My Phone. I'll just read the first part of it. It's a mystery that has the attention of tech experts around the world. It all centers around the Find My iPhone app that keeps the leading people that keeps leading people to an Atlanta home. No one knows why, but the couple who lives there is determined to figure it out. They say as they contact different services, they've even had the police show up in their door with people in tow, um, claiming that they stole a phone. And it's not limited to iPhones. I've heard that, uh, and other articles I've read that it even happens with some people's Android phone. Uh, some theories say that it's maybe the way the programming was. I heard one guy say that he was a a pretty experienced programmer at programming for phones and he said just a matter of uh, putting the data in wrong or doing a rounding error or something like that could cause people to um, continually go to this one spot on the app and uh, other people say it could be a faulty cell tower but uh, I guess now that they've gotten the attention before they couldn't even get anybody interested everybody just kept brushing them off and saying well it's not my responsibility but I guess this couple's gonna stick it out they wanna stay in their house they don't wanna be chased off of their house because of this rogue app doing this, but uh, they've gotten the attention of enough of the tech community that I think some experts out there may be able to come up with a reason and solve it. If I do hear it, or if you guys hear it, be sure and let me know what the solution is to this, or maybe by the time you see this report, um, I got some really great viewers out there that are really on top of stuff, and so uh, please put the link down in the comments if you can actually find out uh, if by the time you see this that they found a solution to this couple that has a uh, People, uh, I guess they had a, a group of young men knocking on the door, too, and they had to calm them down because they were ready for a fight, uh, wanting to know why this couple had stolen their phone. And this next one is from Viral Mega DeLoreans to go back to the future and into production, I guess because of a new law that was signed in. If you're a low production run company, you don't have to submit to a lot of the same laws and safety tests. I know the way it is for the automotive industry. It must be next to impossible to try to start up an automotive company, a full scale one from scratch anymore, because man, there is just so much safety and regulations and laws. You have to make sure you, you probably have to start with maybe something like several billion dollars to even take a shot at at it. Well, I guess there's an exception to the law, and if they only produce like 300 or less per year, they're going to be able to actually produce reproduction DeLoreans, and they're going to keep them looking the same. They'll still give you the, operate, um, the option for a refurbished model, if you'd like, for around 45 to 55 grand, if you want to go refurbished, or they're going to um, sell the new ones for just a little bit less than $100,000, and it depends on the things you choose, like um, the engine type and stuff like that. So uh, I think that's kind of cool. I think a DeLorean is just 
it's pretty much ageless. I think a DeLorean looks cool in any age, and I think 10 or 20 years from now, I think a DeLorean is going to look cool too. In fact, there was a place, and I think this is probably, it, this probably would be the same place. I haven't investigated it further, but um, even 10 years ago, you could go out to California, and some guy had a lot of the uh, parts. He bought all the parts from the old defunct DeLorean Motor Company, and he would, I think at the time, he said back then too, it was somewhere around $45,000. He said, you can either bring me uh, a beat up old uh, DeLorean to rebuild for you, or I could take one that I have and rebuild it for you, but either way you're going to pay around $45,000 for a rebuild, so um, maybe he's the exact one that went into this um, small scale production facility, but uh, yeah, I'm thankful that their politicians got their heads out of their behinds and actually gave a chance for some small automotive manufacturers to actually uh, make a dent in the market. I mean, we need competition. We I, I hate to see the fact that we've only got three major automakers even left, and uh, how long that's going to last, who even knows. I, re I remember the old AMC Motor Company. My first Jeep, my first Jeep CJ5 was an AMC Motors Jeep, and uh, I wish it would have been enough to keep the American Motors Corporation alive, but they ended up selling it off to Chrysler, and the rest is history. No more American Motors Corporation, along with, you know, Pontiac disappeared, Oldsmobile disappeared, etc., etc. And finally, I'm going to finish out on this. This is another scientific paper, but I may someday actually do a one topic. This is one of those one topic deals that I would kind of like to do in the future if, if anybody's interested, but it's about workplace automation, and especially when they get to the point to, uh, where artificial intelligence resembles human beings as far as robotics and stuff like that. Um, there's two series uh, currently, one in Britain, maybe you haven't heard of them, but the one in Britain is called Humans, and then there's one in Sweden called uh, Real Humans, and it basically is set in about the same time period as what we're living in right now, or maybe 10 or 20 years in the future. It's not really a, a futuristic timeline where this is set, but at the time, you can actually buy a human robot or a humbot, they call it in the Swedish version, and it passes pretty much to most people except for uh, some exceptions. Most of them pass as real human beings, and uh, just the way the people react, the way they treat these uh, artificial intelligence and the fact that some of them actually, uh, through programming, supposedly develop self-consciousness and self-awareness. Um, so this is just a paper, and this is Insights and Publications, Four Fundamentals of Workplace Automation. I'll just read the first two chapters of it, and if you feel like it, it, I don't think it's really, compared to most scientific papers, it's not very dry reading, I don't think, but if you think scientific papers are just, you know, not worth, just pass it by, but the potential of artificial intelligence and advanced robots to perform tasks once reserved for humans is no longer reserved for spectacular demonstrations by the likes of IBM's Watson, Rethink Robots, Baxter, DeepMind, or Google's driverless car. Just head to an airport automated check-in kiosk now. Check -in, you know, automated check-in kiosks now dominate many airlines ticketed areas. Pilots actively steer aircraft for just three to seven minutes of many flights with autopilot guiding the rest of the journey. Passport control processes at some airports can place more emphasis on scanning document barcodes than on observing incoming passengers. What will be the impact of automation efforts like these multiple many times across different sectors of the economy? Can we look forward to vast improvements in productivity, freedom from boring work, and improved quality of life? Should we fear threats to jobs, disruptions of organizations, and strains on the social fabric? Um, and that's really that's the end of the second paragraph, and that's what I'm talking about that they address in those two uh, programs. Now you can find them. They're not available on US networks yet that I'm, I know of and I don't think they're even on Netflix, but if you search around on the internet you could catch several episodes. I mean people do post them at those kind of sites to where they stay for a little while and then they get pulled down. So if you want to kind of get a look, but it's basically people dealing with the threats to jobs, dealing with the fact of uh, you know being angry because these things are actually taking over and you have a case of maybe one factory where you have one human being in the factory and the rest of them are these uh, humbots. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care everybody. I will catch you next week.